What's happening team? Nick here. Now today we're going to talk about some basic ideas of blocking in Kumite and we're getting started right now. Ah! All right, so today I'm here with my good friend Jamie. I love having somebody like him to help me out with these, not just so that I can show you the techniques better, but somebody of his size you definitely don't want to get hit by. So in the next few minutes, we're gonna be talking about a few different mistakes that people make while they're blocking, and then a couple things we can keep in mind during our training so that you won't make these mistakes. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so the first thing that we see that people make a mistake with quite often is actually trying to stop the motion while we're blocking. So if we're set up in our stance here and Jamie's throwing, let's say a reverse punch at me and he throws, I don't want to try to absorb this power because that's gonna generate the same amount of impact as if he actually hit me in the body and I wanna avoid any of that at all costs. So one of the things we're gonna talk about is being able to take his motion and somehow get it to continue past you so that you can either follow up or if nothing else, you're not absorbing that impact. All right, now the second thing we're gonna talk about really fast is when we reach too far. So let's say he's throwing a, uh, a jab at my head here and I block way out here. Now if you're looking at this you can obviously see why this is a bad idea. My entire body is wide open for his reverse punch. Ugh, just like that. And like I said, it doesn't feel good when you get smacked. So if I reach up too high, I have to cover all this distance and there's a good chance he's gonna catch me before I actually get my hand into position. All right, now the third and final thing we're gonna talk about is blocking too much. All right, so this happens in a couple different ways. If he's throwing some like just fast punches at me and I'm just covering up, doing what we call turtling up. I like turtles. <laughs> Basically, this is gonna be bad because he's getting to throw a lot of techniques and I'm gonna be only working on trying to not get hit. Eventually, he's gonna get one or two in there and it's gonna be all over at that point. All right, so if he's throwing his punches, I can't afford to sit here and focus all on blocking him. I have to find a way to either get away or to follow up and counter so that I can stop him from trying to punch me in the face. All right, so jumping back to the first idea we were talking about where we're not actually trying to block a motion, we're trying to more redirect it. So if we look at the word for most of our blocks in traditional karate, we use the word uke. Now that doesn't necessarily mean to block. So if I do age uke or soto uke, it really means to receive. So if we're set up into our stance, and he's throwing, let's say, a reverse punch at my body here. I'm not trying to stop it or actually block this motion. What I wanna do is take it in. I wanna receive this action and pull his body into me. This is gonna do a couple different things. It's going to lessen the impact that my body is actually getting, and then also it's gonna put him a little bit out of position, keep his momentum moving towards me so I can follow up afterwards. So if we go from this angle here and he throws that reverse punch, I'm gonna take this past me, or if we set up again and he goes, I might take this down and away from me this way. All right, so it's your choice for what technique you're gonna use, and it all comes down to what your game plan is for your follow-up. All right, so now going back to the second concept we were talking about, where we're not gonna wanna reach too far. As we're training, it's pretty simple the way we wanna think about it. I don't wanna let my elbow disconnect away from my body more than I have to. And the thing that we can keep in mind is that I just wanna stay inside of essentially my bubble. So if we're in our stance and he's punching at me, I don't want to just whatever he throws. I don't wanna reach. I wanna let the motion come to me and just keep it here so it's really close to my body. So again, if we're at this angle and he throws a motion, I wanna keep this right here and not try to push this away where I could then leave myself wide open. So if he backs up a little bit and throws his jab reverse punch, one, two, I wanna keep everything right in close. This allows me the ability to throw my counter attack after this. But making sure we don't go outside of our bubble and we don't reach and leave it there. If we do have to reach a little bit further than we wanted, we have to make sure we get that hand back as soon as possible so we can lessen the chance that they get us with their next technique. All right, now the third and final thing that we were talking about is not turtling up. So we definitely don't wanna just sit there and block a whole lot. Now, by this, I'm not telling you to stop blocking. 
and just go in recklessly. We definitely wanna make sure that we are taking the motions out of our way before we just charge in. But what we do wanna keep in mind is that I can't afford to throw more than three or four blocks without returning a motion. So as we're training, if I'm here, all that I'm gonna work on, if we start off very slow, is if he throws his jab, I'm going to keep this close, not reach out, but I wanna redirect this. So the first idea of not stopping the motion, but instead keeping it moving, keeping it close to me, but at the same time, throwing my punch and then coming right back. So almost like how we do a low block or a knife hand block chamber, as he throws, it'll be same time, I go in. All right, so to work on this, start off very, very slow and have them throw a couple set techniques. So let's say we'll start off with a jab, he'll throw three jabs, and then he'll throw three reverse punches, and we'll just play around with that idea first. So if he goes, I'm gonna go one, two, three, just like that. Now obviously I know what technique he's throwing, and he's throwing it only at a fraction of his normal speed so that I can get the technique in there and get it comfortable. Now if he's throwing a reverse punch, we have a couple options. We can either bring it past us this way, or we can bring it down and across this way here. But again, I don't wanna try to actually block his motion by stopping it. All right, so pros and cons, just really fast little bonus idea here for you, is if I go this way here, he might be able to catch me with his jabbing hand right there following up afterwards. All right, so if I do it this way, I need to make sure that I get this hand back and be able to block his punch before he goes. Now, if he throws his punch and I bring this across, if he tries to punch me with that hand, it's gonna be a lot harder for him because he's gonna be off balance and having to go across his body. So with this one, we could go one and then immediately follow up over the top. So this gives us a little bit more of an option, but it is a little bit different of a technique, almost like a low block, but we're gonna try to take their hand past us when we do this. All right, so really fast, I'm gonna toss a little bonus training drill for you. So I'm gonna have Jamie Seb into his stance. He actually doesn't even know that we're doing this right now, so he's gonna get into his stance, have his hands up. Now, all that we're gonna do is, if he's looking straight forward, he's gonna basically trace his hand around his head and shoulders in more of like a triangle or a diamond pattern, all right? And we can go into any of these spaces without going above our head or below where my arm is naturally. So I'm gonna bring it side to side, up and down, and then we can go at diagonals from here. And then the last one we're gonna add in is this sweep where my palm winds up facing behind me and then right up to here. All right, so now if he's facing me in his normal stance and we're throwing all these motions, this is all that he needs to pick off most of my actions without having to worry too much about what's coming next because his hand is already there. So as we're blocking, as we're going, I'm gonna throw just a bunch of random techniques. Big motions like this could represent a big roundhouse or a hook kick coming around. But as we do this, he's gonna be blocking, just nice and relaxed, and then anytime he wants, he can fire in a counter shot, just like that. So anytime he's in a position where he can do that, he'll just fire that in there. Now we wanna make sure as we're training this, we're not blocking for a minute before we throw a reverse punch. So we maybe block three, four times, and then throw that in there. And then as you get comfortable with it, pick up the speed a little bit, and just have some fun. Go fast. All right, I hope you enjoyed these drills. Thank you so much, Jamie, for joining us on this one. He's gonna be back for quite a few more videos. We'll have a lot of fun working on some more blocking, some kicking, a whole bunch of different things. Now, if you have any requests, toss them down in the comment section, or just say, hey, I'd love to connect with everybody down there. But if you did like this, I really appreciate you hitting that like button and subscribing so you catch all of our future videos. But have an awesome time training. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. All right, peace.